So about four weeks ago, we finally got our hands on the very much anticipated trail running shoe from Hoka, the Speed Goat 5. Uh, we took them out for their first spin, just shy of 14 miles on a pretty challenging route that we call the Zena Loop down here in Cornwall. So some stunning inland trails to start with, and then we come back on some super technical coast path all the way home. Uh, the shoe felt pretty good straight out of the box, I've got to say. The only issue I did have is the laces worked loose a couple of times and I had to stop and retie them. So let's dive into the review and find out if I've continued to be impressed. Welcome back folks. Yep, it's me again, Lloyd Purvis, and this is Run For Adventure. It is full in-depth review time here at the channel again, and this is a review that a lot of you guys have been asking for. So just to give you a bit of backstory about me and the Speedgoat model of trail shoe, uh, I've run in every single model, right from the early days of that original, pretty unstable trail shoe, up to the Speedgoat 3, which I loved. I ran thousands of miles in that shoe. I think I had three or four pairs, Lots of training miles, lots of race miles, and it didn't let me down once. However, the same can't be said for the Speedgoat 4. It just didn't feel the same to me. It didn't fit my foot very well. And the outsole and midsole just felt a little bit less stable on uneven ground. So I've had very high hopes for the new Speedgoat 5s, and I've had my fingers tightly crossed that this shoe is gonna run and feel a bit more like that brilliant Speedgoat 3. Just before we dive in and find out if that has been the case, just gonna give you guys a few facts and figures and a bit of info on the changes that have been made and the new construction. So the shoe now retails in the UK for 130 pounds and it weighs in at 308 grams in a men's UK 10. So that's 15 grams lighter than the Speedgoat 4s. It still runs off that same four mil offset and when it comes down to sizing, I would say it does size up a little bit small. So I've gone up half a size to a UK 10 from my normal UK 9.5, and I've always run the Speedgo in a 10, and I'd say it's got average width in the toe box. Starting with the upper design first, and we've got quite a few new additions going on in the Speedgo 5. So this time around, Hoka have used a lighter, softer, more breathable mesh fabric in the upper construction. Uh, another good thing, Hoka have used lots of recycled material in the shoe this time around so that's always a positive thing not a massive amount of sort of structural overlays on the upper though so uh, it's going to be interesting to see how one it holds up to durability and two how we get on with midfoot hold as we put more miles into the shoe we do have a few uh, structural overlays around the lace eyelets just to make them a bit more durable and we've got a bit of an overlay around the toe but that's more about protection with a nice rubberized toe bumper you get a good level of padding around that ankle collar and in the heel cup and you can probably see one of the biggest design changes to the shoe is a completely reworked heel counter. So this is the first time the Speedgoat model has had this sort of Hoka flared heel. They've used it in lots of their road shoes up till now, the Clifton 8, the Mac 4, but I'm pretty sure this is the first time they've put it into a trail running shoe. So I was really interested to see how that would handle life out on the trails. We've got a gusseted tongue in the upper um, to give you that nice sort of midfoot lockdown. But like so many running shoes these days, it's pretty thin in design, so there's not a lot of padding there. And it's quite short in the shoe, so there's not a lot of tongue sticking out of the upper. Um, I tend to like a little bit more padding in the tongue just to give me that sort of nice top of the foot comfort from the laces. But I am happy to say they've worked in some nice perforations there just for a bit of breathability and extra airflow. Moving on down to the midsole and there's been a few subtle changes here so it's not going to run massively different to the previous model. Obviously it is still a deeply cushioned trail running shoe with that nice sort of rockered profile in the midsole. Hoka claim that they've used a slightly lighter foam compound this time round, and that's where a lot of the weight saving has been made. So it should still feel very soft, very cushioned underfoot, but maybe a little bit more nimble, a bit more responsive when you're moving at speed over technical ground. Uh, also, it's supposed to have a slightly wider platform across the forefoot there, just for a bit of added stability, but also to make it a bit more accommodating on fit. Uh, to be honest, 
It looks very similar to the Speedgoat 4 to me. And completing the shoe off is the all important outsole. And I've always been a big fan of the Vibram Mega Grip outsole on this shoe. Uh, really happy to see it cross over to the new version. Great levels of grip and traction in rocky areas. Whether they're wet or dry, you feel super connected, really confident on your footing. Yes, it could sometimes struggle a bit in the deep boggy mud, but it's hard for a trail shoe to grip everything. That's a pretty impossible thing to achieve. Uh, it's still running off a of 5 mil lug depth, but Hocker do claim that they slightly tweaked the pattern and the layout to make this the grippiest speed goat to date. Uh, I have to say, out on that first run, that it actually coped with the conditions really well, and we did have to run through a couple of boggy sections. Now, out on that first run, it definitely felt more like the Speedgoat 3 to me, but I've put about 50 miles into the shoe now. So let's dive in and find out how it's performed over those miles. Firstly, the fact it feels more like a 3 is obviously a massive positive to me. I wouldn't say it's as good, but it's definitely a big step in the right direction. Uh, it seems to hold my foot a bit better. The tongue feels a bit more comfortable across the top of my foot, although I would still like to see a bit more padding and length in that tongue. Not that I've had any problems or issues with it over the miles. Out on that first run, I did have a few issues with the laces working loose and I kind of lost that sort of midfoot hold in the upper. Uh, I have managed to stop that now, but I do have to pull the shoe in quite tight. You can see there's not a lot of space between those laces. Uh, it does worry me a little bit, you know, as the shoe gives and the upper stretches a bit over time, I might not be able to adjust that shoe any tighter around my midfoot. So if we look at my beloved old pair of Speedgo 3s, I've got a lot more space there for adjustment. So um, not a big fan of having to pull a shoe in really, really tight to get that sort of midfoot lockdown. Holding the back end of the shoe has been really good. No heel slippage going on or anything like that. Uh, after our initial impressions video, I did have a lot of comments uh, from viewers saying they're a bit concerned about this flared heel design on a trail running shoe because it looks like it could let debris into that upper, which I totally understand. It looks like it could possibly do that, but happy to report nothing like that has happened over the miles. Whether I've been out on the trails or even out on the town, so running in the sand, I've had no debris get into that upper at all. So all in all, all a really positive experience when it comes to feel and fit of that upper, especially when I compare it to the experience I had in my Speedgoat 4s. But if you're watching Hoka, next time round, maybe just a little bit more padding and a bit more length on that tongue, please. As far as that new lighter midsole goes, another big improvement for me. You know, I think it definitely felt a bit more responsive and definitely more stable underfoot compared to the previous version. In fact, I'd go as far to say it felt as good as the midsole on the threes. And that's high praise indeed, because I really enjoyed how that midsole felt to the point where if I had to choose a shoe out of my shoe collection to say go and run 50 miles tomorrow on a big mix of terrain, I'd choose this one because I've really enjoyed the level of comfort this new midsole's given me. Last but not least is obviously the outsole. And what can I say? It's a speed goat with Vibram Mega Grip rubber on it. So it's performed really well. I actually used the shoe in the KVK the other week. Uh, we had a beautiful blue sky sunshine day and it really performed well out on those sort of dry, rocky trails. Uh, we made a video of that race. So uh, definitely worth checking out, even if it is just a have a look at the stunning views we had on the day. Uh, I've managed to get the shoe out in some mud as well, and I have to say it that that new lug layout and pattern, I think it did cope with it a bit better. Uh, it's still not a shoe designed for the midst of winter on super muddy, boggy trails, but I definitely felt a slight improvement when it comes to traction while running in the mud. So as you can see, it has been a much more positive experience in the new Speedgoat 5s compared to my experience in the 4s. And it's been great to be back in the shoe running miles. But we've reached that point in the review where we need to get stuck into some scoring. And we're going to start with the price first. So with the new Speedgoat now retailing for £130 here in the UK, we have seen a slight £5 increase in the price. And I'm never happy when that happens, but you know, that's the way the world works. And we have seen some much bigger price increases with some of the other brands. So I personally think for a deeply cushioned trail running shoe that's going to soak up lots of training and racing miles on a big mix of terrain, £130 isn't too bad. So we're going to score it a pretty reasonable 8 out of 10 when it comes to price. 
Number two on the list is comfort and performance, and so far, so good. Uh, I think all the new improvements are definitely working well for my foot shape. I feel it just fits my foot better. I'm liking that softer, more breathable feel from the upper. It's one of those shoes that I just put on my foot, I go running, and I don't really give it a second thought, and that's a feel I always want from my running shoes. The fact the midsole feels very similar to the Speedgoat 3s, and we've got that brilliant Vibram Mega Grip outsole, but them slight tweaks to the lug pattern has just given it a bit more traction in muddy conditions. So it's thumbs up all round from me. I think if I just didn't have to pull it in so tight to get that midfoot lockdown, I'd probably have scored it higher. But it's still going to score well here at Run for Adventure, so we're going to score it a solid 8 out of 10 when it comes to comfort and performance. So, 8's all round so far, and finally moving on to the very important topic of durability. And I'm happy to say nothing to report so far. So the wear on the outside is looking really good, even though I've had to run quite a bit of road mileage over those 50 miles to get to the trails. No early signs of wear or fatigue on the upper at all. Although I would like to see a few more sort of structural and durability overlays on that upper, maybe some around the midfoot just to give you an uh, increase sort of midfoot hold, and definitely some more around that toe box, especially at the flex point. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this upper holds up over time and we're going to keep you updated with that as we put more miles into the shoe but like I said so far so good so it's going to be eights all round so totaling up all those points at Run for Adventure the new updated Speedgoat 5 is going to score a very respectable 24 out of 30 and I'm very happy to say the Speedgo is back. When it comes to the super subjective topic of looks, and we all know that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I actually really like the look of the new Speedgo 5. And to be honest, I've always liked the way the Speedgo looks and the colorways that they choose. I think the green and the blue colorway is probably the strongest in the range, but yeah, good looking shoe. So it's definitely gonna be a big thumbs up for looks from me. As far as comparisons go, obviously other trail running shoes within the Hoka range. So uh, models like the Mafati, or the Challenger ATR will give you a similar feel. Although I've always preferred the feel of the Speedgo. It feels a bit soft, a bit lighter, a bit more responsive. When it comes to other brands, maybe the Olympus from Ultra, again, another deeply cushioned trail running shoe with a vibrant mega grip outsole as well. Although it is an ultra shoe, so it'll be zero drop, so it doesn't have a heel offset. And lastly, maybe take a look at the Trailfly Ultra G300 from Innovate. Uh, again, very soft, very deeply cushioned. Wouldn't feel a million miles away from a Speedgo, although it is quite a bit more expensive. So rounding up with a quick conclusion, and I think it's definitely moving in the right direction when it comes to the new updated model. I'm really liking all the new changes, and I can see myself spending a lot of time in this shoe this summer. It's definitely in the mix when it comes to what shoe I'll be using at the TDS at UTMB in August. So if you are looking for a deeply cushioned trail shoe that's going to soak up all those training and racing miles, it's going to give you a really good level of grip and traction on most trail surfaces. Or you were a big fan of the Speedgoat 3 and you didn't get on with the Speedgoat 4s like me, then I would definitely recommend checking out the new updated Speedgoat 5. So what I've done is I've left a link in the description below to the Hoka website if you want to check it out in a bit more detail. That is a wrap on another trail running shoe review here at the channel, but don't worry. I'm sure a lot of you sitting there at home thinking, I'm a road runner. They keep reviewing trail running shoes. We have a couple of exciting road running shoes heading our way as we speak. So we got the very exciting new uh, Socony Ride 15, which has had some massive updates and some massive improvements. But we've also got the very popular Pegasus 39. So two great neutral daily trainers kind of going head to head. Uh, we've also got plans to travel up the coast a bit to a stunning location uh, next week to film a couple of videos so definitely keep your eyes peeled because those videos will be coming to the channel very soon and don't forget guys if you have found it helpful you know what to do smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already don't forget to hit that bell icon as well so you'll be notified when we upload any new content but for now guys thanks for watching it's always appreciated we'll see you back here very soon and as always stay safe and keep on running you can probably see that one of the biggest changes to the design of the new... Uh, um, I can definitely say that I don't know what I'm talking about. 
top of the foot comfort to keep those laces out of harm's way. Um, and I'm glad, oh, 